Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Greetings, my friends, and welcome to another review of Boruto, Naruto Next Generations. This was a jam-packed chapter filled with lots of great character interactions, some really solid action, and even the introduction of a brand new villainous character. There's a lot to love about this chapter, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So, before we get to all of the cool stuff with Code in this chapter, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on with Boruto and Kawaki. We get to see that Kawaki now has a brand new arm, which is all sorts of coolness. We also get to see some more great interactions between him, Amato, and even Sumire. And I think that this is really awesome as we've seen a little bit more of this in the anime version. And a lot of people seem to be really smitten with the fact that apparently Sumire and Kawaki could potentially be an item. But this chapter still made it pretty clear that Sumire kind of has a thing for Boruto, and she still seems to get really freaked out over the prospect of this being talked about out loud. It leads to a couple of laughs in this chapter, and honestly, I liked it. Also, Amato continues to completely mess with my mind, because every single time it seems like Kawaki leaves the room when he's in it, it sounds like Amato wants to tell him something really important, but then he just decides not to say anything. But Sumire is paying attention to all of these interactions and she's trying to read underneath the underneath. There's something going on here with Amato and I don't know quite know what it is, but we'll get to a little bit more of that later. We do have a really cool scene between Boruto and Kawaki and Boruto throughout most of this chapter is doing a stupid TV interview, again, mostly played for laughs over the fact that he's incredibly nervous and doesn't quite know what to say. And then Kawaki just shows up as they're hanging out on Mount Ninja more and we get to see that Kawaki has come up with this crazy plan that could potentially save both of them, and that is actually utilizing the power of their karmas to find a vessel for themselves. Now, at first, this doesn't seem like something that's actually going to work at all, because Boruto is a Boy Scout, just like his dad. He's not going to sacrifice someone else so that he could be reincarnated. However, Kawaki suggests that if they were to use anyone, it should be Code, who is the last inner member of Kara. And we get to learn a lot more about him, his association with the group, and what he's going to potentially be doing in the future of the series as the chapter actually goes on. But the fact of the matter is, I just don't see this actually happening with Boruto. I don't see him utilizing someone else as a vessel so that he could be reincarnated. Although crazier things have happened in the series, we're just going to have to see. But here's where Boruto makes the big declaration that we've heard a thousand times in the Naruto-verse, is when you want to get stronger, you got to train, baby. That's exactly what they're going to do as Boruto and Kawaki prepare to go through a big training session. It almost seems like we're getting closer and closer to the eventual time skip of the series. And I don't know how they're going to handle it, but we could be getting there pretty soon. The rest of the chapter, however, focuses a little bit more on Naruto, Shikamaru, and Amato talking about the fact that Amato knows a lot more about Code than they could potentially realize. You see, Code is an interesting character in a sense that he's sort of like that big surprise villain who shows up at the end of the storyline, except that this time, they're actually taking the time to properly build him up, and I think that makes him really fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm saying it right now. I think Code is going to be one of the coolest villains from the entire series. And a lot of that is because we get the big revelation that he's actually the second child to survive all of those experimentations along with Kawaki and receiving the karma. He actually got the white karma. This was revealed a couple chapters ago and the fact that he's about to basically transform into an Otsusuki god. But we also get to see that Amato has created all of these fail-safes against Jigen. And Code, in a way, was kind of one of them. We get the big reveal that all of the other members of Kara, their bodies had been augmented with with ninja technology and it made them even more powerful, but Code was immensely powerful to begin with, to the point where he actually had restraints put on his body to suppress all of his power. Luckily, Code was entirely dedicated to Ishiki, seeing him as a god. This basically means that he's not going to try and betray the group and he's not going to go against Ishiki. He's simply just going to be devoted to the Otsusuki religion as that's what he believes it to actually be. But Amato also created a bunch of other cyborgs, which were supposedly even more powerful than Jigen and their entire group. And they were supposedly scrapped 
but actually they were hidden away. In the very end of this chapter, we get to see that Code has actually arrived in that weird snowy dimension, which is like a, a cult facility which was run by Boro, and there's even a few outer members there who are acting as guards, and Code arrives as he's going to try and retrieve these cyborgs which are inside. And there's a great scene of him actually utilizing his abilities for the very first time in the series, which I have to say are pretty damned awesome. They're actually connected to those weird black bands that are on his face. He comes up across these two guards who try to stop him when suddenly he's able to summon these bands all over the ground and even over the surface of people's bodies. And this essentially allows him to sort of teleport within these bands and pop up from just about any direction. He can even teleport certain parts of his body. He utilizes this to impale one of these guys and then another time he actually has one of these bands appear over this guy's chest and just his fingers come out from his chest and he slices this guy's neck open. It is creative as all hell and it's downright horrifying in the way that it's actually used. When he makes his way into the inner uh, parts of this facility, he meets this old man who ends up leading him to this like giant cryostasis chamber, which is filled with a mysterious bunch of cyborgs, one of them being a woman who goes by the name of Ida. And according to Code, she is the woman who knows everything about everything. All I know is, if you remember how powerful Delta was, imagine if there's like a whole army of people like this. And now, basically, we're getting ready to get a bunch of cyborg villains in the series. I don't know if Ida is going to be the only one or if they're going to bring in a few more villains. I think it's going to be necessary to actually bring in some more of these bad guys in order to make their, their forces seem a little more threatening. While Naruto and Sasuke might not be as powerful as they were before, they're still Naruto and Sasuke. They're still going to be threats. And there's a lot of other ninja, too, who are going to be able to go up against against them, and Boruto and Kawaki are going to get stronger, so the villains are also going to have to increase their forces, and by bringing in all of these scrapped cyborgs that were created by Amato, I think that's going to be really freaking cool, and code utilizing them I think is all sorts of awesome. Who would have thought that the future of the Naruto-verse would involve the characters battling against evil cyborgs? I could not have predicted that. So what's the rundown on the latest chapter of Boruto, Naruto Next Generations? Ooh, man, I loved this chapter so much. Uh, I really loved all of the smaller moments. I need to stress that a lot. I really liked the, the Sumire and Kawaki interactions. They added a little bit of levity to this chapter, especially because in the latter half, things get really intense with Code actually taking out these two soldiers and making his way into Boro's facility. That moment alone, I thought, looked really awesome, and I love the creativity of him using his bands to, uh, you know, just throw them all over the place, him being able to try travel through all of them. I just think it's really damned clever. And uh, again, in the manga version, they're black. In the anime version, they're silver. I wonder if they're going to change the color, if they're going to keep them that way. Uh, you know, by keeping them silver in the anime, it kind of works because I know this doesn't sound weird. I guess it's like T-1000 liquid metal kind of feeling when he's traveling through them or utilizing his hands and transforming them. Uh, the way that he took out those guards in this chapter was just brutal and epic and just so disturbing the fact that he can put these bands on your body, which basically means he can pretty much just attack you from anywhere as long as he can get his bands on your body. And that's all sorts of disturbing. As for the brand new character that they introduced at the end, Ida, She's just weird looking. She kind of gives me Delta vibes in terms of how she looks. And that makes sense because Amato is the one who actually created all of these characters. Um, but she has just a really interesting and striking and different design. Especially her weird dress which seems to have like these weird sort of like solar system patterns on them. I don't know. They look kind of childish in some senses. But again, if they're anything like Delta, they're going to be a massive threat. I mean... Naruto is really powerful, but even he struggled a little bit in his battle against Delta. So just imagine if there's like five or more of these things, they're going to be a real threat. And I, I love that they're introducing more of these type of technological villains to the series because, again, they're so refreshing when compared to some of the other stuff that we've seen from the rest of the series. And it also just gives, uh, you know, Boruto a little more distinctiveness when compared to Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. And uh, I really like the concept of Kawaki coming up with the idea of utilizing someone else to, you know, be a vessel for them. I'd love to hear the theories behind all of this and how this could potentially tie to the time skip of the series, what's eventually going to lead to, uh, you know, both Boruto and Kawaki battling against one another. I think that's going to be pretty awesome as well. Like, I'd love to hear from you guys. Really, that's my favorite thing about doing these reviews is hearing the thoughts and theories from you guys about what you think could potentially happen for the future. And there's a lot to unpack in this chapter too, especially with the concept of new villains and cyborgs and freaking Code being this super powerful dude whose power is actually being restrained. 
it, it makes so much more sense why in the anime version they're, they're, they're giving us these small little scenes with him which actually manage to expand on him just a little bit more because he is ultimately going to be one of the biggest threats of this series and could potentially be the next super big major villain for the series. I, I just cannot wait to see what's going to happen next with him and his story and getting to learn a little bit more about his interactions with Kawaki in the past as Kawaki seems to know quite a bit about code as does Amato. So there's just so much more intrigue in terms of how they're going to handle that. But Boruto and Kawaki, training montage time. It's pretty typical. This is something that happens all the time in the Naruto world. We're going to see a lot of training, and I think that's just to be expected. Whether this is going to lead to another brand new power-up or this is going to be the segue into the actual time skip of the series remains to be seen, uh, but I'm interested to see where things are going to go from here. There's so much more potential for the future of uh, Boruto, and I'm really loving this storyline so much. It can be a little convoluted at times, but it still manages to be really entertaining, and uh, really it's just uh, good stuff. That's all I have to say. I loved this chapter. I'm giving it a 5 out of 5, but your thoughts may differ. You might have loved this chapter. You might have hated this chapter. I'd love to get your thoughts about it in the comments section below, and I'd also love to hear your theories about what could potentially happen in the future of the show, what you want to see, and what you're looking forward to in Boruto, Naruto Next Generations. Let's talk all about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this this one. If you did like this video, utilize your teleportation band abilities to get down to that like button. Hit it right now. It's super easy to do. Helps out these videos a lot. Ensures more people can actually see my content. I also want to take this time to thank all of my patrons. You guys are the Joni level ninja of Ace Guru because you're making those monthly donations and I cannot thank you enough for that. Remember first time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choosing as well as adding your name to this list of amazing people that you currently see on screen, the producers of Ace Guru. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay dandy, baby.